Two views, one point of disagreement. Now you know the truth about the two basic issues on which covenant and dispensational theologians say they disagree. Number one, the method one should use in interpreting the scriptures, and number two, the relationship of Israel to the church. As I just stated, the heart of the dispensationalist's interest in interpreting the scriptures literally is their identification of the Jews as the literal Israel spoken of by the prophets. So there is actually only one issue that separates covenant theology from dispensational theology. That is whether the church or the Jews should be identified as Israel. Covenant theologians adhere to the traditional Christian view that the church is spiritual Israel. Dispensationalists ignorantly uphold Darby's claim that the Jews are literal Israel and there is no spiritual Israel. However, neither side has a completely accurate understanding of the truth of the scriptural message. The truth is, Jesus Christ is literal Israel, and the church is parabolically his spiritual body. Therefore, on that one issue at least, covenant theology has a somewhat better understanding of the truth. That's not surprising. John Calvin had a greater regard for historic Christian beliefs than Darby the Dunce did. Yet in their silence concerning the future of the church, Calvin and the other reformers left the door wide open for Satan to use Darby's prophetic system to convince most of the evangelical church that the Jews are literal Israel and the church should not be identified with Israel in any way. Until Darby came up with his idiotic notion that the Jews are literal Israel, the church had always identified itself as spiritual Israel, heir of the promise God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But after Origen introduced his folly around A.D. 200, Satan was able to entice the church into fuzzy thinking concerning the identity of literal Israel. Even John Calvin was sucked into that vortex by what Augustine had written. Consequently, he exhibited a decided ambivalence concerning the Jews and what, if any, role they continued to play in God's plan. If you have read and believed the things I presented in Not All Israel is Israel, you should already know that Darby's goofiness is nothing more than Satan's lie. According to the scriptures, Jesus Christ is literal Israel, heir to all the promises of God. The church is spiritual Israel only in the sense that it is parabolically the spiritual body of Jesus Christ, the body he took on at his resurrection. Therefore, contrary to what most folks believe, Jesus Christ is both literal Israel and spiritual Israel, and it is sheer blasphemy to say that unregenerate Jews are in any way still a part of Israel. But the Apostle Paul explains all those things in parabolic imagery that is simple enough for anyone to understand if they really want to. So let's go on to see how Satan has managed to convince most of the evangelical Protestant church that Darby's idiotic identification of the Jews as literal Israel is true.